One of my favorite things about the saxophone is all the variations in design. So we know that the alto and tenor are out there and they're pretty standard. But over the years, some weird, wonderful people have created some really beautiful and strange saxophones. These vary from really cool engravings all the way up to the weirdest materials you could possibly think for a saxophone. And here at sax.co.uk London, we have collected a fair few of some of these saxophones. So me and George are here to guide you through some of the strangest saxophones here at sax.co.uk London. In the history of the saxophone, there isn't a horn quite as striking as the Grafton. Beautiful, beautiful saxophone. So, post-World War II, uh, brass was quite difficult to get hold of as a whole, and it was very, very expensive. So, an Italian man living on Grafton Way in London decided to mix it up and try different materials. In this case, acrylic. And he created the Grafton, which is a beautiful saxophone. They were made famous by Charlie Parker, who played a Grafton on jazz at Massey Hall, and Ornette Coleman, who basically invented free jazz on A Shape of Jazz to Come on a Grafton, but they do have their quirks and they do feel particularly weird under the fingers. Well, mm. what did you think of that? Yeah, so the first thing I noticed was the weight of it. It's a lot heavier than I anticipated with it being acrylic. It's a kind of average weight for an alto sax. Mm. Um, underneath the fingers, it's everything's where it should be. Yeah. Um, obviously being older, some of the, uh, the you know, where, where you put in your pinky fingers, that. They're slightly different, a little bit more Americanized in a way. So, saying it's an English horn, you know. Yeah, like, um, like old comms and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then how the thing sounds, it's, it's, all, it's almost like a, a, a dumbed down version of the alto. It's not too erratic or in your face. It's, it's quite smooth in a way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I reckon if we get it under a microphone, see how it sounds compared to the other ones. Love that. Awesome. <laughs> Grafton's are by no means the only plastic saxophones ever to have been created. A much more modern example are these vibratos. And these, instead of being made of acrylic, are made of polycarbonate, which means they are super light and you can get them see-through, which is like, these are the only see-through saxophones I've ever seen. I mean, this would be super cool. You can pop some lights in it. You can see your spit run down here. What more could you possibly want? What more? Um, what more? Uh, the other great thing about these is the uh, self-leveling pads. So unlike a traditional saxophone, that has leather pads that are sat in a specific way. These are designed to be flexible and sit in place. And it's a really innovative thing. And it's, they're just really funny little saxophones, mm. aren't they? Do you they? know what these pads remind me of? What do they do remind you of? Do you remember those sweets, the Percy Pigs? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I love Percy. I, I mean, I wouldn't have a go at trying to eat Yeah, don't eat that. No, no. that'd be quite um, chewy. <laughs> but as you guys can probably imagine, it's very light. It's a bit clunky, given the material it's made of. Mm. And with that, the sound it produces has that kind of, that brightness, that, I mean, can you call it a plastic sound? Like it actually plastic has sound. a plastic sound in a way, doesn't it? Um, but I mean, the, I mean, the intonation isn't as good as a normal sax. Um, but I mean, let's put it under the microphone and see how it fares against the others. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.
Whereas most of the saxophones that we're featuring are not for sale because they're either not playable or we just love them too much and we're keeping them for ourselves. This is one you can buy. Woo. So this is a Cannonball, so Cannonball, American company, Taiwanese parts. Uh, but what makes Cannonball so special is that you can basically customize them however you like. And we have customized this one ourselves. So we've gone with the black ruby finish, which is the lacquer on the top. We have chosen the gems in there as well, the semi-precious stones. And we have gone for this dragon fire engraving finish. And they have so many engraving options. You can have owls, you can have hummingbirds, dragons, all kinds of stuff. It's an incredible process. And they're incredible horns. Mm. And as you can imagine, having a dragon on there makes you play better. Oh obviously. yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah, as if you know nothing about cannonballs, Michael's giving you a really good rundown, but they are super big sounding saxophones. Um, their altos and their tenors and all of them that they make, they um, yeah, they cut through, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, looks fantastic. In terms of how it feels underneath the fingers, it's a modern saxophone. What else can you say? It's, it's very easy to play. The intonation's great. Um, so yeah, let's yeah, let's throw some air down this and get it shouting. Hopefully, it won't catch on fire. Oh. <laughs> What in the soprano is this? Well, George, you'll be shocked to know that it's not a soprano. It's not. Oh my God! <laughs> no, so this is a straight alto. These are really, really odd and fantastic. So in the early days of saxophone making, there was a lot of experimentation happening. Even those early, early Adolf saxes were really strange and had all kinds of key alignments. Now, in the 1920s, the Bucher Company decided to start experimenting with straight altos and straight tenors. In fact, there is rumors that they even made a straight baritone for a vaudeville player of the era. How are you? Are you out here with a baritone? Oh, well, I have no <laughs> idea. It must be the size of the room. Because the thing is, they are really, really striking. And it really goes into that sort of comedy vaudeville thing. Um, however, they didn't take off because they are really impractical to play. At least that's what I found from playing them. Yeah, um, they have a very, very unique sound though. Um, you wouldn't, if you were to hear it, you wouldn't think that's an alto, would you? You'd be like, hmm, what is that? What is going on? Yeah. Um, and that's, is only, it can only be one thing and it's just because it is straight and the, the air is moving around differently. It's not being projected in the same way. Similar to a, a curved soprano sounds quite different to a straight soprano. Exactly it? that. Um, but in essence, it's the exact same thing apart from the, the bell is not curved. So everything's in the same place as it usually would be. Um, yeah, you don't have to play it any different. You don't have to compensate for anything differently. I imagine you'd be micing it up a bit differently though, rather than having it up here because there's going to be quite a lot of sound coming out here. Exactly that. And you can find out for yourself because these are available to buy here at sax.co.uk. They are very, very funky, but we should hear out the sounds. Let's do it. <laughs> When looking at the saxophone family, especially at the higher pitch range, we can look at the Sopranino. So here at sax.co.uk, we sell straight Sopraninos by Yannick Sauer and Moriat, and they are great and interesting, but not as interesting as a curved Sopranino. So this is made by the Orsi company in Italy, one of the oldest manufacturers in Italy. And they were very famous at the time for 
experimenting with very, very extreme ends of the saxophone scale. So they were one of the first companies to make contrabasses. Mm -hmm. And they are one of the only people to ever make curved sopraninos. And honestly, I'm glad that it didn't really take on because it's a very <laughs> weird little thing. Yeah. Um, straight sopraninos are not the easiest thing to play anyway, are they? Because the smaller the saxophone gets, the more precise you have to be. And for some reason, well, actually, I do know the reason because this isn't one that we're selling. It's quite an old one. It pro could probably do with a bit of a refurb, let's be honest. Oh, but God, yeah. it is tricky to play. Um, but in terms of how it fares against a straight sopranino, you know, um, everything's where it is usually. You know, like you've got your, your tiny little palm keys there. I mean, you can't even call them palm keys. They're not touching your palm, are they? Yeah. Um, but it's bright. It's the projection is coming from a different angle, like um, like we've spoken about on other saxophone models. So, um, yeah, let's see how this sounds underneath the mic. It's going to be a bit mad. Yeah, I'll go in the other room. Yeah, fair play. The history of the wind synth is full of weird and wonderful designs. So in those early days, we are familiar with things like the Akai Iwi, made famous by Michael Brecker. But there was another wind synth that inspired our friend Adrian Crutchfield, Prince's saxophone player, to take the saxophone up in the first place. And that is this right here. This thing right here. This thing right here. He loved it when he came in. It was amazing. <laughs> this is the Casio DH100. Now, you look at it and you think it looks a bit like a toy, but it actually has a lot of functionality. So it does have a MIDI out, the five pin MIDI. So if you did want to experiment with sounds, you can. It's got breath control. It's got multiple sounds on it. It's shaped like a saxophone. which is just about. Just, just about. about. <laughs> <laughs> just about shaped like a saxophone. And this, you can see how this became the foundations of the innovations that we have seen in the wind synthesizers mm. since. How old is this thing then? Oh, it's mid 80s. So is it? yeah, right. it's relatively early. I mean, it's been well kept to be fair, apart from um, we are missing, was there meant to be a mouthpiece? I imagine there was some sort of mouthpiece. Yeah, I'd really like to think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually have snuck away and had a go on this thing yeah. and it still is under the category or bracket of toy, in my, <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion. Um, <gasps> unless I just have no idea how to operate this thing. I'm sure Adrian would be able to give me a fantastic tutorial one day. But yeah, I bet you absolutely blast this thing. I'm yeah. sure he did. But um, yeah, it's it's old. It's old school. Uh, things have come a long way. Um, but yeah, you've got a few sounds to select from. Um, so I reckon we'd probably just stick it on the saxophone or the synth reed, potentially. And uh, yeah, see how it sounds under the mic. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. saxophones we have here at sax.co.uk there isn't one that's caught the attention and the imagination quite like this monstrosity right here our wooden saxophone across our social media channels instagram and tiktok you might have seen george playing this already trying to trying to play this already and it's such a unique thing um the wooden saxophone actually has a long and storied history. Adolf Sax's very first prototypes of the saxophone were made of wood. Really? It was a true woodwind instrument at that point, but then he quickly realized that brass made it a lot better. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I know. I read that today and I was like, oh my God. Oh, right. But since then, I mean, th the only history I can find of this is there's a company in Indonesia that makes them and they are just a marveling craftsmanship. It's a stunning thing. I can't believe someone's managed to make it even work in the first place. Yes. Um, sadly, this one doesn't work so well at the minute, does it? No, not, not um, ideal. I've done a few videos on this over the years gone by. And there's one thing I must tell you viewers that the notes that you think you are going to sound when you press them, it's the harsh reality is they are no way near the notes that they should be. <gasps> yes, I know. So quite a lot of the videos that you've seen, we are having to slap on a lot of auto-tune, do a bit of pitch correction in areas just to actually get a simple, even if it's just a scale, to make it stay in the same key. Um, so it is 
a bit of a pain to play, but it's a lovely piece of artwork. It's a gorgeous say. thing. Um, yeah, the, um, the craftsmanship behind it is, it is ridiculous because they haven't actually missed anything. It's all got its own little way of working. Um, we were just talking about the palm, palm keys here, the little springs that they've got on there. It is, so heavy, so heavy. It is, yeah, it is clever. Um, so we'll get the pitch correction loaded up, auto-tune, fired up. From here to West Ham, they're going to be hearing that yeah. auto-tune. <laughs> yeah, they are, they are. Well played. Um, and yeah, we'll give it a go, see how it sounds. So those are some of the craziest instruments we have here at sax.co.uk London. George, which one was your favourite? Boring answer, the Cannonball. Obviously, yeah, the Cannonball plays and is available to buy. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the answer people are looking for would either be the wooden one or the digital horn. The digital the horn. The Casio. Love that Casio. <laughs> yes. I love the Casio as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Uh, under the comments, tell us what is your favourite one to listen to and come and see us in London and come say hello. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.